Hello, welcome to the series where I show you what I am trying to do to become a web developer. My name's Craig and this is week 17. Oh, 17 already. So I've, there's been a little bit of a break since the last episode, which was episode 13. That's just due to Christmas. I've done a little bit between then and now, but not too much to go into detail really. I hope you all had a nice Christmas. Unfortunately, I had a bit of an issue just after Christmas with my desktop. Windows stopped working. And I booted it up, black screen. Like, what, okay, restart. Blue screen, okay, that's not great. I tried BIOS, safe mode, the USB recovery stick, and I couldn't get Windows working. I was like tearing my hair out, my whatever hair I have. And Thankfully I had Ubuntu on a memory stick, so I booted that up, got the files off, so I could read the hard drive with Ubuntu, I just couldn't boot it into Windows. So I got the files off, and eventually I had a spare hard drive, so I installed Ubuntu on that, installed that in my PC, and I'm now running Linux. It feels really weird to say I'm a Linux user. It is a little bit of a love-hate relationship right now with Linux. I'm really enjoying using the command line. I think the interface looks really nice. I had some issues with sound to begin with. Uh, I think that's resolved now. And using DaVinci Resolve, my video editing software of choice, is a little bit more difficult. But enough with my woes on that. Let's dive in and see how much time I've spent on web development. So in total this week I've spent 23 hours and 10 minutes on web development and it's split up quite nicely between tutorials and projects with 11 hours 25 minutes on tutorials and 11 hours 45 minutes on projects. Now I didn't work on Monday, I think I may have done an hour. Uh, so most of that has come through Tuesday and Friday with a little bit more on Saturday. So I'm generally really happy with the amount of time I've spent this week. Let's go over what I've learned. And this week has been really interesting. So because I'm now using a Linux environment, I decided to start using the Odin project resource. It's a free uh, website. It's open source, I believe, uh, to learn web development. Now you need either a Mac or a Linux environment. That doesn't mean you need Linux installed. You can dual boot or you can't have a virtual machine. I couldn't get my virtual machine working last time and now I'm on Linux, I'm just using it. So the Odin project is slightly different to Free Code Camp. In my opinion, I feel it explains the concepts a little bit more and it also links to external resources to go into a little bit more detail as well. However, compared to Free Code Camp, where Free Code Camp has an inbuilt code editor where you can do it online, the Odin project doesn't have that, so it's slightly harder if you want to do it between different machines, in my opinion. So, for example, I sometimes take my laptop and go down to my mom's, and I can't do the Odin project if I do that, so I'll have to do free code camp. It's not a huge thing, but it's just something to be aware of. I'm not going to stop using free code camp, I think that's brilliant. I'm going to use both and make sure they complement each other. But in terms of what I've been doing in the Odin project this week has just been going through the foundational course. My goal was initially to do 50% completion by the end of the month and then probably in February finish that and go on to the JavaScript full stack course which looks really good. However I'm already 60% through the foundational course. A lot of it is just you know going over things I've already learned and a lot more practice which is really useful. What I have found amazing with the Odin project was how it went through the terminal a little bit more and it introduced Git and using Git through the terminal, which I am very grateful for. So I might try and finish the foundational course this month. I'll see how I get on. I've also been going through a lot more React Skillshare courses. I'll link one of them down below. I believe it's by Caleb Taulian. I think that's how he says his name. I've taken a few of his courses and I really like them. I just wanted to bit more information on React, not just going through Free Code Camp, but seeing how other people do it as well. I still am very much a beginner with 
React. I haven't built my own app yet, so that's something I want to do. I also haven't actually, like, is it called, like, I haven't built an app as in run the command npm run build. I've been doing everything through the live server, so I want to deploy an app as well, just to make sure I can do that. And then finally, I wanted to do a main course. One of my goals this year is to learn a little bit of back-end web development, which I think now that I'm doing the Odin project should be quite a nice smooth transition. Unfortunately, I didn't do the main course this week. Uh, I just wasn't really in the right mindset, and I watched part of the introduction video and I really just didn't feel like I clicked with the instructor. Next week, I'm going to try and push through that a little bit and at least do one or two hours of that course. If I don't like it after that, I'll be binning it and finding a new course. That's really everything I've been learning this week. Let's dive over to the computer and see what I've been building. I won't be going through the React apps that I've built using tutorials, but I've got a JS project, a front end mentor challenge, and I'll go through two of the projects from the Odin project. So let's dive right in. So I'm just on my general navigation page. I've got a week 14 page where I've built a 2022 goals website, but I won't go into that right now. I think there's a, an issue with mobile on that, but feel free to check that out. We'll go into week 17. My plan this year is to do a JavaScript project either weekly or every other week just to try and improve my skills. And first up was a random color generator. In a way it was kind of straightforward, but it did challenge me quite a bit in terms of converting between hex codes and decimals. And then to use the slider to change the transparency. So we'll go into this. I'm gonna give it a couple of seconds because I do actually have a pop-up, which basically says you can enter your own RGBA code or your hex code, hit enter and it will convert it. So I thought that was pretty cool. So not only does it create a random color for you, you can convert colors that you already have. So we'll just go through a few examples. You know, you click it and you know, random colors are generated, which I thought was pretty cool. The transparency updates and it changes both the hex code transparency and the RGBA. I didn't know you could add alpha codes to the hex. Yeah, it's these last two digits. So um, like I say, if we just add in, even if it's just a six digit hex code, it will convert it to RGBA with an alpha of that. And I remember CC is 80%, 86%. Oh, I've added an extra F, whoops. Yeah, 80% and this slider also changed. So I was really happy with this. It was like I say, a little bit challenging. I did a lot of Googling for the conversion of hex codes to RGBA, but I'm quite happy. Mobile, it's, you know, I haven't really done anything different on mobile. There's no media queries. So that's the random color generator. You can also copy it. So if we just click the copy, it's got an alert there saying it's been copied to the clipboard. We'll go through the front end mentor challenge next. So we got the challenge link. It was a, I believe it was a very recently added challenge. It's just a simple HTML and CSS. I wanted to practice my skills just after Christmas, get back into the swing of things. And quite a simple design, some hover animations. I really like that eye and color overlay. I thought that was brilliant. So yeah, in general, set up my colors. There's your original image. What I've done this time is I added boxes around it. Well, I, like how I thought the layout was going to be. So those were boxes. That was a, going to be a grid layout and another grid layout. And I've got like kind of general boxes for heights here just to see if I was doing it all right. I'm getting slightly better with Figma, not brilliantly. I probably just need to take a small introductory course, but we'll see how it gets on. But this is my design. I really do like that uh, background overlay. So I think it's yeah background blend the, with the overlay value. And I thought that was really nice. He changed the icon to 
display block or something so it was hidden and you know there's other hover modes and mobile pretty straightforward i do have a media query i don't know why i'm not showing my no, no i am showing it it's just not up there maybe i don't actually have a media query on this that's not great but i do have a media query for the height just because when it gets small it does that thing where it cuts it off at the top so i think anything below 500 i've it's got a little media query on there so some scrolling works not too difficult but it was good to get back into the swing of things and then finally the Odin project so I ain't got a link to the website there I haven't actually got a link to my repository uh, need to style my navigation but I've added a link to my repo where I've kind of organized it all a little bit so I'm saving everything in the foundation section right now you know some boilerplates and projects that went through on the html section and the css these are all the challenges and that was the project so we'll go through that we've got the Odin recipe project from the html section you know i have added a little bit of styling here it wasn't necessary it was just supposed to be a plain website kind of teaching you to link add images things like that but pretty simple and I think that's a display grid going on there. And then the Flexbox project, you were supposed to kind of add your own images and I think a few, maybe your own copy. But I just went with the layout they had. I wanted to try and replicate that as well as I could. It was only meant to be designed for desktop, but I did do a mobile version afterwards. It's a little bit backwards. I know I should have done mobile first, then up to desktop, but that's how I've done it. I had a few issues with kind of the spacing on these sections. Sometimes they weren't like stretching properly and that was all due, due to using, I think it was flex basis auto or zero, I can't remember which one, but solved it in the end. Generally, it's a really nice layout. The issues with mobile, uh, if we go to a slightly smaller screen, they're too close together. Ideally, that would be a burger bar. Again, I had an issue with this kind of gray box, which would be an image when I went to mobile. So this is now display flex direction column. And this wasn't showing up properly. And that was due to flex basis. Uh, I set that to auto. So this flex container is still flex row, but I've just added a flex wrap. So if we go to slightly larger screens, it wraps to you know, two by two and eventually it will go to the four by four, which is really nice. Back to mobile. This again, I've changed that to a column direction for flex. One thing that doesn't match up quite nicely to the design they provided is this quote section. I believe they had the quote Kind of narrower and it went over three or four lines i couldn't quite get that working as i wanted it but still looks okay a really nice design that's everything for week 17. i did make a few changes to my portfolio website but not enough to show you what i've done but feel free to go check that out in the link below i'm fairly happy with what i've achieved this week Next week, my focus is going to be more on React and Free Code Camp. I'd like to push through that a little bit more and finish the React section. I've also been looking at some jobs. Now, am I ready to get a job? Probably not, but I'm going to be applying anyways. Um, one of the jobs looked for some experience with Node.js. So next week, I want to spend a few hours as well, just getting some basics under my belt with Node.js. All the links will be down below. As always, your feedback, thoughts, and advice would be greatly appreciated. And if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. I'll catch you all later.